basic navigation. If you would like to do a proper online navigation course, I can highly recommend SistershipTraining.com, but if you are a bit rusty on your navigation skills, or if you are just beginning, then hopefully you will enjoy this video. Let's go right back to the beginning, longitude and latitude. To be able to describe your position anywhere in the world, you can use latitude and longitude. These numbers relate to a grid pattern on the Earth. Latitude is described in degrees, minutes, and decimals of a minute, either north or south of the equator. The equator is 0 and the poles are 90 north or south. Longitude is described in degrees either east or west of Greenwich. Greenwich is known as the Prime Meridian. This covers most most of Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, and half the Pacific. West covers most of the UK, Spain, the west coast of Africa, the Atlantic, the Americas, and the other half of the Pacific. Longitude lines are meridians and great circles, i.e. each one directs the Earth in half. Whereas latitude lines are like slices of the Earth. You can read more about great circles and their relevance here. Latitude is always written first. The position is given in degrees, minutes, and decimals of a minute. Here in Christchurch, New Zealand, we are located at 4Y3O-V3-2S, 170 So if you know that the latitude is south and the longitude is east, then you can automatically know that the position is somewhere in the southern hemisphere, somewhere between Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. Ishi, if you know that the latitude is north and the longitude is west, then the position is somewhere in the northern hemisphere between the UK, America, and Hawaii. Ish. The lower the latitude number, the closer it is to the equator. The higher the number, the closer it is to the North or South Pole. The lower the longitude number, the closer it is to Greenwich in the UK. The higher the longitude number, the closer it is to the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Speed and distance. One nautical mile, both 1852 meters. A nautical mile is one minute of latitude. Latitude is marked on the left and right hand side of nautical charts. If you are taking distance measurements, then you must remember to do this on the left or right hand side of the chart, and not the top or bottom. The top and bottom of the chart is longitude, and longitude degrees do not equal one nautical mile. Advertisement A naught is one nautical mile per hour. A nautical mile is written as M. Time and distance. Speed. Speed and distance. Time. Distance or speed X time. Time. When working out time, it is best to use the 24-hour clock to convert 375 hours into minutes. 3.75 hours. 3 hours. 075 x 60. Minutes. 3 hours 45 minutes. To convert 45 minutes into hours, ice decimal. 0 row wash. 45, 60 hours. 0 0.75 hours. Or 2 hours 15 minutes into hours, ice decimal. 2, 15, 60 hours. 2, 25 hours. Steering a course. When reading a compass or describing a course, use three figures. I eat 0450 as opposed to 450. C means compass, direction, course, or bearing as per your compass reading. M means magnetic, means the compass reading once deviation has been accounted for. See below. T means true, meaning true north as per the chart once deviation and variation has been accounted for. See below. R means relative. See below. There are 3 on 60 O on a compass. Serlo through to 359 O. You should always use three figures, i.e. 090 O. Compass directions should be rounded to the nearest degree. There are 60s or minutes in an arc. Then you get decimals of a minute. For example, 56025.7. Variation. Did you know that magnetic north moves around? The amount that it varies depends on your position on the Earth, and it changes from year to year. So your magnetic compass points to magnetic north, but all your charts are drawn with the aspect of true north. Variation is the difference between magnetic north and true north. The variation figure can be found on the compass rows on a chart. All courses should be converted to true courses before being plotted on the chart in the example below. The variation in 1984 was 1908E, with an annual increase of 4. So the difference between 2016 and 1984 is 32 years. 30 US 4, 128. Divide that by 60 to get degrees, and whatever is left over is the minutes. So that is 2 U 8, and add that to the 1908s. So the variation now should be 24 mo 16. You can figure out whether to add or subtract the variation from the compass reading with the Wii rhyme below. Variation west, compass best. Variation east, compass least. So that really means you add the variation to the compass when it is east, and you subtract it when it is west. Deviation. Deviation is another compass error, but this is caused by magnetic influences from the boat. You can read more about deviation and how to calculate it here. Advertisement. 
So if you have a course you are steering on your compass, you need to convert it from compass to magnetic, and from magnetic to true, to get the true course and vice versa. To remember the order in which to apply the deviation and variation, I remember it with the mnemonic, Cadbury Dairy Milk Very Tasty. There is another one going back the other way, which is, True virgins make dull company. I think I prefer the chocolate one. Compass, deviation, magnetic, variation, true. You can then do this in the opposite direction to convert a true course to a course to steer on your compass. If variation and deviation are in the same direction, add them together. If they are in opposite directions, subtract the smallest from the largest. How to do it? Plot your course on the chart. Measure the true angle. Apply variation. Apply deviation. This is the course to steer on your compass. If you are using a hand-bearing compass, you assume that there is no deviation. Just don't stand too close to any magnetic stuff if you can. Relative bearings. A compass bearing is the direction of the object taken from the boat when using a hand-bearing compass. You assume that there is no deviation. A relative bearing is relative to the boat. So dead ahead is Zalor and dead astern is 180 OR. If you take your true course that you are steering and add the relative bearing, then you get the true bearing. To convert a relative bearing to a true bearing, add 360 and then take off the true heading. Transit bearing. Transit bearing is when two objects are seen exactly in line with each other. This means that your vessel lays somewhere on this line. Transit bearings are the fastest, most accurate way of determining a position line as no calculations are necessary. Yay. You do not need to apply variation or deviation. Leading lights are a good example of transit bearings. When a pair of leading lights appear in transit, they form a line along which the vessel should travel. You can also have light sectors where usually red lights indicate an area of danger, or the port side of a channel, for example. You can use transit bearings to measure your compass deviation. Clearing bearings. Clearing bearings maintain safe passage past an obstruction, and they do require variation and deviation to be applied. Clearing marks have no bearing, they guide you past an obstruction by maintaining a visual guide. Radar bearing. Radars can either be stabilized and linked to a compass, or unstabilized, and Zawano is the direction in which the vessel is heading. Aye, aye, head up. Head up display will only give you relative bearings, i.e. in relation to where your vessel is heading. EBL is an electronic bearing line. You can track your relative motion traveling past a landmark. You can use the range lines to see if you are drifting closer to the coast as you travel past and use this to ascertain any leeway. This is called parallel indexing. Line of soundings. This is another method of ascertaining your position to be used in combination with another position fixing method. If you take a series of soundings while traveling in a straight line, it is possible to match them to the chart. This is easier to do if the seabed has a distinctive shape, i.e. not a gentle slope. You need to make an adjustment for the height of the tide. You must also know the speed and distance traveled over the ground, not just through the water. Distance ash time x speed. Record the soundings over a period of time. Correct the soundings for the height of the tide and the depth of the transducer below the waterline. Convert your compass course to a true course. If there is any tidal current account for that, and plot the true course and water movement to obtain a ground track and speed. Using speed and time intervals, calculate the distance traveled in M over the ground. Measure the distances onto the edge of a piece of paper using the latitude scale in nautical miles from your chart. Note the soundings and times against the appropriate time marks. Move the paper over the chart until the soundings match those on the chart. The final sounding is your position at the time. 